First of all, I mean, the differences between sort of private and public are probably the two distinct things. Hybrid uh, gives you a blend of multiple services, so it kind of sits over the top. Um, but you need to look at uh, you know, sort of what, where applications are sitting and where you're going to place them. And the differences come from typically who owns the uh, who owns the infrastructure underneath the service itself. Uh, so, you know, in terms of a, a private cloud. Um, that could be a uh, dedicated resource, um, so that's the you know, equipment, um, could be owned by the company in question, it might be owned by the service provider that's hosting it, um, but it's you know, your applications and data are you know, the only applications and data on that particular equipment. But there may be some shared services behind it like connectivity or maybe some shared storage that's presented up. Um, the, uh, the other way to look at that is there are services like Infrastructure as a Service, which is a multi-tented platform. Um, that's you know, a, a infrastructure that's owned by a service provider, like our own N4 Cloud, uh, where it's multi-tented and it's securely partitioned so that uh, different customers can consume you know, what they need and they can scale and, 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 and detract what they need, basically, on an ongoing basis. Public cloud offerings. These are, these are a different business model um, and what they offer is, is access to you know, a highly scalable, on-demand compute resource that can be switched on and off um, very rapidly. So for those workloads that are very, very peaky, you know, sort of uh, online websites where you can't predict the kind of load that you're going to be seeing, um, you can scale applications uh, very, very fast, pay for what you consume and then bring it back again. Um, it's not always the cheapest model um, because obviously there's a cost to, to provide that resource um, to be on standby, but it's certainly um, a lower cost than trying to provision just in case. So certain workloads do belong in the, sort of the, the public cloud environment like that. Simple use case scenarios for things like private cloud, things that we see every day are uh, as, as organizations go through this transformation from you know, sort of legacy infrastructure that maybe they own themselves, um, they've got to try and make some of the things that they have today fit in a cloud environment. So they don't want to procure the hardware, but at the same time, um, they, they want to get to, to a more service-led model uh, and buy that from a service. So, so service providers uh, can now provide private cloud solutions where the hardware is still dedicated. And that allows some customers to do things like use their legacy enterprise agreements for Microsoft licensing, um, because there are rules about license mobility. Uh, and you can't do that with some of the big hyperscale environments or even infrastructure as a service in some cases where it's multi-tenanted. So there are certain transition rules that, uh, that allow you to move your, your, your workloads in a transition. Um, sort of step, stepping stones, if you like, between this, and then in a couple more years, they can move perhaps into a more classic cloud environment. Um, from a, uh, a use case scenario for a, a, a public, you know, hyperscale cloud environment, you know, for, for these things, you know, online applications or data processing applications that need to scale rapidly, you know, peaky, unpredictable workloads, um, they can spin up servers using automation tools and then switch them off again, uh, sometimes within the same hour, um, you know, tightly controlling cost. Um, it might necessarily be the cheapest way of actually buying back compute power, but certainly when you consider that they need to perhaps sometimes multiply it by 100 for three hours and then switch it off again, um, that's a far uh, more effective cost model for them to run a certain types of application workload. And then to extend that, most of those um, public uh, cloud environments are now offering a variety of services. So, you know, things like Office 365 is a classic example of how, you know, classic locally installed applications are now finding their way up into services that are delivered from these large data centers um, for easy consumption by pretty much anyone.